Hello everyone and welcome to another super science video for the Mass Denton Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and today we're going to be continuing our series on simple machines. We did a videos on the inclined plane and one on the wedge, and we're going to do another one on the wedge. And just for a quick review of what exactly a wedge is, it is a simple machine. It is two ramps or inclined planes together. One end is a lot thicker than the other one, and it is an active machine, which means you have to use it, and it is often used to cut or tear apart something. And we did an experiment about which wedges would cut Play-Doh best. And there's also wedges on things that you may think are very complicated, like airplanes. And while I definitely can't bring a real airplane in here, we can do an experiment with wedges using paper airplanes. Because you can see there is a wedge shape on the edge of this one. And there is also a wedge that is different so more blunted than this one's sharper and longer. And we're gonna figure out which one of these wedges does the best flying through the air. And so you won't need too much stuff for this experiment. I have patterns. I'm using the book Folding Airplanes with STEM, but there are many other books that we have here at the Library on Paper Airplanes, or you can get an adult to help you find them online. And to make your paper airplane, you will need some printer paper, which is thin. If you use construction paper, it'll be too thick to fold. So you can use the white and you can decorate it with colors, with crowns and markers if you like. Or if you have some colored printer paper around, that'd be great too. Then you will need either a ruler or a pencil to make sure to smooth out the creases as you're making your airplane. And we're gonna use a tape measure to see how far each of the airplanes goes. And if you don't have a tape measure, a yardstick or ruler or this ruler will work as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start with our first paper airplane, and I'm doing it from the book that I showed you earlier. And on page 12 to 13, we're going to be doing the dynamic dart. So let me move this off camera so you can see how I'm folding the paper easier. All right, so then we have our paper, and you'll keep it long ways, and then we're going to fold it in half like this. And then what I like to do is take the ruler and make sure my creases are good. Then we unfold. And then we're gonna take one corner and we're gonna fold it to th this edge right here, the fold we just made, and then crease it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Then Increase that as well. So you have two triangles meet in the middle. Then you're going to take this point right here on the edge and you're going to fold it towards the middle like this. And this is the step I had the most trouble with. So if it takes you a few guys a few times, then it is totally understandable. There we go. And you want to put it towards that middle fold as well. And what I had was keeping the paper pointing was my problem. And then crease it as well. And then I'm using the ruler to make it nice and sharp. And then the nice thing though is like once you have this, it's a lot easier to do the second fold because you know where it's supposed to look like. And so I'm gonna crease this as well. So it's like you have two long triangles and one right here, crease it. All right, so I'll just show you, this is what it looks like. And then the next step is we are going to fold it in half. And once again, you guessed it, we're going to crease it really well. And then you are going to take one of the wings, not both of them, just one side, and you are going to fold it down so that it lines up, the edges line up. And your flap is going to look like this. I'm going to move my hand so you guys can see it a little better. And then once you have that, turn your plane around. And then you're going to fold it the exact same way. And then get the creases out. Make it really good. And then lift them up. And then you have, this is our dynamic dart. 
All right, so the next airplane model we're going to do is the Long Ranger, which is on page 28 and 29. This is still a beginner level airplane. And once again, I'm going to move this off camera so it's easier for you guys to see how I'm folding it. And so get your piece of paper out. And the first couple steps are like what we do with the dart, folding in half. Make sure it's nice and creased. Then we'll unfold it. Take one corner and form it to make a triangle right here. And then take the other corner to make another triangle. Make sure that the edges line up on the middle fold. My, I'm having a little trouble with mine. There we go. Wasn't quite matching up. So then crease it. And then, then this is gonna be different. We are gonna take the top point and move it all the way to the middle of the paper. So about right here and do it like this. And it kind of looks like an envelope now with the flap. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this corner and we are going to make another triangle. You want to leave a little bit of room right here for this middle flap. So we'll do it on this side, and then we'll do the same. So make sure the points touch on the middle fold. Okay, crease both sides with the ruler. Then the next thing we're gonna do is that little tab right here, that little middle thing, we're gonna fold it up so it keeps these two triangles in place, which is important when we're flying it, and then we're going to fold the paper in half again. So it is going to look, oh, I'm not doing it evenly. There we go. It's going to look like this. See like they're kind of like the straight edge and then the blunt end and then crease that as well. And then the last thing, we're gonna do two more things. We're gonna make this towards the middle, fold it. And then I'm going to crease it. And you just see, my, I'm gonna move my hand so you can see the fold a little better. Then flip it over and fold it the exact same way on the other side. Okay, and this is your Long Ranger. And as you can see, the point is a lot blunter than the dart. So let's see which one of these actually flies the farthest. All right, let's test out our airplanes. First is the dart, so let's see how far that goes. Pretty far. Next we have our Long Ranger. And let's see how far that goes. All right, so it looks like that the dart is farther. I'm gonna go get the tape measure and see exactly how much further the dart flew. So hold on one second. All right, so we're back and I measured how long they were. I did it off camera because I had some trouble with the tape measure, but let's go and we can see exactly how far each of them went. So here's our Lone Ranger. It went 103 inches, which is about eight feet and six inches, respectable. But our dart seemed to have gone even farther, almost twice as far. So this is the dart is 212 inches or 17 feet and seven inches, more than double the amount. And as you can see, the wedge on this is a lot pointier than the other one. So the wedge was more effective in cutting through the drag or air resistance where molecules try to slow an object down. So the wedge, this pointy wedge is better at flying than the other one. So you guys can experiment. Maybe I threw this one better than the other one, but you guys can see which one goes farther and do some races with your family and friends. All right, everyone, I hope you really enjoyed making those paper airplanes and testing like which one would fly the furthest. And if you're looking for more patterns of paper airplanes, then here's the book that I showed you at the beginning. It's Folding Paper Airplanes with STEM for Beginners to Experts by Maria Buckingham. And this has over 30 different projects in it. And what I like about it is the instructions are pretty easy. It's clear. They have different levels, like this is a novice or like a mid-level 
project if you want to try something a little harder. And the thing, the best thing I like about it is because you see things like reverse folds and valley folds, and you're like, what is, on earth are those? Well, they have, Maria has a great explanation of all those in the beginning of the book, of techniques and terms. And I like how you can just pick and choose whatever project is interesting to you, and hopefully you can find one that you like in this book. And the other book that I found is called Flying Machines, How the Wright Brothers Soared. Um, this one is written by Allison Wilgus and Molly Brooks, and it's part of a series called Science Comics, which is really interesting, and I'll, hopefully I want to highlight more of these in these videos. But this one talks about the Wright Brothers, who were from Ohio, and they were one of the first people to make an actual working airplane. And, but they had a lot of competition at the time, and they're from all over the world, from Germany, France, and this is, the, it tells their story in graphic novel format, and the, it's from the view of their younger sister, Kathleen Wright, who was actually a very interesting person as well, and she was a teacher, and she also promoted um, her brother's accomplishments around the world, and I just like how it's just like, it's like a race, who's going to be the first, and although we know who became the first, which was the Wright brothers. They still have interesting, like, other people's tries as well. And I just, like, they have, like, they explain really well about how an airplane works. And they break it up so you're not overwhelmed by it works. And it's, like, kind of um, mixed in with the story as well. And I really enjoyed reading it, and I hope you do as well. Well, thank you so much for joining me for another science video. I look forward to sharing more experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.